These shelf series videos have been a staple of my channel since the very beginning with the Phantom Menace shelf, and today we finally close out the Skywalker saga, with the ninth movie of course being The Rise of Skywalker. I've got my 3D printer cranking now on something that we will show at the very end of the video. I've got my 3D printed hexagon stands ready, let's start with the First Order Trooper. This is actually the SH Figure Arts. The Black Series First Order Trooper is notorious for being terribly articulated and just really hard to stand, and you can't even get its elbows bent. I know he's technically not holding a gun, but uh, I, this one doesn't come with the uh, First Order gun. Next we have the Black Series Sith Jet Trooper. It's got some nice pops of yellow on the front and the back, and the articulation is improved upon from the original Force Awakens Troopers, luckily. Uh, I really don't mind this figure. He's going to go in the back here, though, but that pop of red is going to really add to the Rise of Skywalker aesthetic. Next, we have the First Order Trooper with the pauldron here. This is actually the Mafex set that comes with all the crazy accessories. I showed this in my last Jedi video, if you want to see this figure a little bit more in depth. I think this actually scales quite nicely with Black Series, and if you've been to Disneyland, you've seen how big those First Order Troopers are. I think this fits nicely. Back to the Black Series here for the Jet Trooper, because I don't know if some of you knew this, but they fly now! That joke is specifically for Justin from at the Out of the Basement channel. And if you haven't noticed, I'm just kind of building a wall of troopers on the back here because there are so many good characters that I want to have closer to the front. Next we have the standard Sith Trooper here from the end of the film as well. This has a lot of really nice sculpted detail in the helmet and the chest plate, but uh, he is still going to go on the back here, again just kind of balancing out all of that white with some more red. Next we have part of uh, what could have been a very cool line of figures with the Knight of Ren. I think a lot of us were kind of hoping to see more of these guys in the Black Series, even though they don't feature too much in the movie. We've definitely seen, you know, figures from characters that uh, have even less screen time, and they just have really cool character design. Next we have Darkseid Ray, a weird scene, a weird character, a weird figure. Uh, the only figure that we've actually got in the Rise of Skywalker packaging for the Galaxy line, which is kind of crazy. She does come with sometimes a gold saber, sometimes a red one, depending on which one you get. I'm referring to the hilt, not the blade color. Next is Hux with the updated photo reel print from the Disney multi-pack. This figure is okay, the neck really bothers me, it still has that weird hinge at the neck that just makes the neck look so weird. If I were going to have this on my permanent display, I might dremel that out and add a neck from a spare figure. But otherwise, I think it's actually a pretty impressive and underrated head sculpt. Okay, now we're getting into the good stuff, the main characters here. This is a custom Poe from Rise of Skywalker from Tim's Toys. Tim is insanely talented and does a lot of really amazing stuff from the sequel trilogy for characters like this that really deserve figures in the Black Series that unfortunately just never happened. But knowing that we're probably never getting these figures in the Black Series, especially not at this quality, I went ahead and grabbed them from Tim. Next we have C-3PO. This figure does have that feature where if you put it in the freezer, his eyes will turn bright red. And I don't know if you guys all know this, but if you pop off the back of the head, there's actually some sculpted painted detail there. So you can recreate the scene where Babu Frick opens him up. Next we have another incredible custom by Tim's Toys, which is Finn with a custom head by Watto Scrapyard. Beautiful work by both of them. He's in my permanent display, but right now he's going to go next to 3PO on the shelf. This next figure goes for pretty cheap and is pretty underrated. I think it's a gorgeous sculpt, it's just the character didn't really resonate with a lot of people. I actually use a piece from a spare cape of hers to make this little cloth under Salacious Crumb here. Anytime I can use sculpted plastic instead of cloth, I do just because it scales better. I'm going to put her next to Finn here so they can both talk about how they used to be stormtroopers. I'm really proud of this next custom because I commissioned the head sculpt of John Williams' cameo from Rise of Skywalker from an artist called Blue D on Instagram. I also, of course, had them make a standard John Williams head so we could put it on the Professor Indiana Jones body, repaint that, and you could have John Williams on your shelf. Both of these were masterfully painted by Frederick's figures. This is, of course, on a Luthan rail body, and it's kind of a blink and you miss it moment in the movie, but I just think it looks so cool and I really like him on the shelf. Next is Zori Bliss, another figure that totally peg warmed. I don't feel like the costume design looks very Star Wars. I mean, I know we were on a different planet. It's a big galaxy, but still wasn't a huge fan. Uh, although this figure does have a removable faceplate with the actress Carrie Russell's eyes here with some photo reel. Let me know in the comments below if you knew about this feature or not, because I featured it in a video once and a lot of people seemed pretty surprised, which kind of surprised me. Unfortunately, she has some very wobbly ankles, so she struggles to stand up even with the stand here. If I had this on my permanent display, I would use one of the hexagon stands with the back piece to it, but that'll do for now. Next we have Maz Kanata, who shows up again in The Rise of Skywalker, and then she's gonna go over here with some droids. She's a little figure, so I figure we can get a couple extra little pieces up on here. 
like Babu Frick with his surprisingly tiny and articulated visor here. Now this next custom is actually the reason that I met Tim, and it is this incredible Rise of Skywalker Leia. This was the first time I spent like more than $100 on a custom figure, and I remember thinking, okay, this is the only one I'm ever gonna buy, it's okay to splurge a little bit, and now I have like 100 custom figures, I don't even want to know. But this one is definitely one of my favorites, and it's on my permanent display. Next we're gonna use the SH Figure Arts Kylo Ren here. I think this is one of the better Kylos. They've done one for every single movie, and then two from The Force Awakens, one with the unmasked head and one without. I really like this one. It's not the one that I have permanently on display, only because I have a custom head by Fett clone on my Force Awakens Kylo that I just really love. But you can't have Kylo without Rey. We're gonna put them next to each other just given their relationship in this movie and how that develops. This is the SH Figure Arts here. I just think it has a slightly better likeness to Daisy Ridley and it's just a nice cleaner sculpt overall, but the Black Series one is actually really great too. I'm excited to see where her story goes in future films. So even though the story direction of this trilogy was a little bit weird, I think a lot of people in general just kind of liked Rey. And just like the Black Series one, the SH Figure Arts one comes with a little DO droid. I think it's just a nice, cleaner sculpt than the Black Series one. We're going to use these Figure Arts, A New Hope Chewbacca, to close out the main crew here, as we see in the film. And this one uses that hexagon stand with a little back piece to it. And in this case, we're just going to use his bandolier to kind of clip onto there. This one was falling over on my shelf so much, and his feet don't fit into the foot clip. So I never used one, but then I realized I could use one of these and just stick it behind his strap there. I I saw Tim at WonderCon recently and he had this Lando on display and I told him if no one buys that I'm probably going to be going home with it. Sure enough I ended up snagging it. I made the cane myself using some fodder parts I think from like a Marvel Legends spear of some sort and then just painted the tip silver. And our last figure on the shelf, a classic just R2-D2. He's in all nine Skywalker Saga films, I believe. I think it's, he and C-3PO are like the only characters that can claim that. Correct me if I'm wrong, I might be totally embarrassing myself here. And then the thing that was on my 3D printer is actually the little stand for Darth Vader's helmet. This file is free on my Patreon if you have a 3D printer. And this little Darth Vader helmet, I believe it's from the Kylo Ren throne room set, although I think another one was released at another time. I'm totally like blanking out on these here, but let me know in the comments below, please. Okay, so now that we've finished all nine Skywalker Saga films, I am going to start back with The Phantom Menace, but I'm going to wait until the Padme and Anakin figures come out later this year. Let me know in the comments below which shelf series videos you'd like to see me make in the meantime. We've done over 21 at this point, so please check out the playlist that is on your screen now. Hit that like button if you did enjoy this video, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We always talk about Star Wars The Black Series on this channel with reviews, dioramas, customs, collection tours, toy hunts and more. Here are some other videos from the channel that you might enjoy and I will see you all next time.